What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In today's video we're going to be looking at the four things I wish I knew before starting Cubase. These processes might be simple to a more experienced user, but when you first start out in a brand new software, it can get very tedious and we want to make sure that we nail down that workflow. If you haven't seen my six things I wish I knew video, I'm going to go ahead and drop that down below in the description. And just so we're clear, these are four brand new tips. I'm not repeating any tips in this video, so let's get right to it. So we're going to go straight into tip number one. This is latency issues. So if you're having any latency problems, there is one button that can solve all of that and make sure that you have no latency while you are recording. Now, let's say you have 20 tracks. They all have plugins. You're at the last stage of your composition and you want to re-record a piano part or a guitar part. So the way we solve that is by going to the gear sign on the top right, right over here. And you're going to go to where it says constrain delay compensation. When you press that button, what it's going to do is let's say I have this contact instance and I'm just going to go to the mixer really quick and I'm going to add a bunch of plugins to this. So let's say I want to add a reverb. Let's say I want to go ahead and add perhaps some distortion. I'm going to use Saturn 2 from Fab Filter. And then let's say I just want to add some modulation. So let's just go ahead and choose one of these. Let's choose the UAD Brigade Chorus. And now I'm going to go ahead and exit out of the mixer. If I press the Constraint Delay Compensation button, what it's going to do is it's going to go into the inserts. So when you take a look at the mixer, what it's going to do is it's going to disable all the plugins that are CPU intensive in order to give you the best possible latency for your recording. So notice how if I move this down and I take off the delay compensation and I go back into my mixer, the chorus is turned on. But if I turn it on and I go back to the mixer, then the chorus has been turned off. So this is a way for you to, again, control your latency when you are playing your instrument. So one thing to keep in mind is if you are using a virtual amp, let's say from Neural DSP or maybe a UAD amp, it might turn it off. So you might have to track your guitar clean until you can turn off the latency compensation and then it'll go back and activate your amp. So the second tip we're going to look at is the time code reset. Now this has been something that has been requested lately for my videos and it's pretty much shifting the time code to start at a different position but making sure that your time code starts at zero zero. So notice how down here I have my time code clock. You can switch it to bars and beats, seconds, uh, samples and 60 frames but for this example I'm gonna use time code and the reason why I use time code is because I'm a film composer but let's go ahead and check out how we can reset the position of the time code so let's say for example we want to start on bar 3 and if we look at bar 3 measure 1 it's exactly 4 seconds long now we want that to start at 0 seconds so we have two options we can go to the project setting here go to set time code at cursor or we can use the shortcut option T and it'll populate this pop-up. And all you need to do here is do 000. That's it. Hit OK. Now here we have a tricky question when you hit OK. It says you have modified the time code offset. Do you want to keep the project content at its time code positions? So remember, we shifted this time code from 4 seconds to 0. If we hit yes, it's going to move our project, which means we're not really doing anything. It's just going to go back to four seconds. So watch what happens. If I hit yes, it's going to move my project from three to five because it says, well, if this is zero, then this is going to be four seconds. That's not what we want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that, go back into time code at cursor. I'm going to hit zero, zero, and then hit OK. But this time, instead of yes, I'm going to hit no and watch what happens. Now I'm still locked in at measure three but my time code position is at zero. This is super key if you're working in film. We might want to start at one and notice how here I put the file at one and look at the time code position. This is a really odd place to start in. So we go to project time code and we highlight the last number to the left and we just hit zero, 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 zero like that and then hit okay, no. And then now our time code starts at zero, zero and our movie is at one. We are now moving on to tip number three. 
So tip number three has to do with track versions. Now keep in mind, I don't know exactly which tools are available in the pro version and like the other versions like artists or any of the other versions that Cubase has. So I'm using the pro version. So this has, of course, all of the tools. If you do not see something or something is not where I'm clicking on it, then it probably means that your version of Cubase does not have it. So for example, this next tip talks about track versions because this can limit how many sessions or how many copies of the same song you can have. So track versions are going to be found on the title of the instrument that you're on. So for example, if I click this drop down arrow, it's going to say new version. Now what exactly this is, let's say I draw a MIDI region at measure one. And then I say, well, I want to keep this version, but I want to do something else to it. Maybe it fits this scene a lot better. I'm going to go here and I'm going to hit new version. This now creates a version two. And let's say, okay, well, I want to write it, but maybe only halfway. Now, instead of having a completely different Cubase session with this, I can go back into track versions and I can go to version one. And there is my version one still saved. I can go into version two. And then of course, if I open this, I can rename these versions if I wanted to. I could delete a version, I can create a new one, or I can duplicate the same version. This is again, very, very helpful. Let's say you're a vocalist and you wanna try different ad libs. Well, you can control it using versions because now you can, instead of creating like four tracks and doing three different versions and then muting each one of them and saying, okay, I like this one better, you can do it all in the same track and when you do versions, all of your plugins still stay the same as well. So even though I'm in version two, if I go back to my mixer, you can see that I have the plugin still activated here. So it's a great, great way for you to control different versions of your project without having to go outside of Cubase and creating a whole different session. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is something that may not be too common to people. And this is what we call the direct offline processing. So direct offline processing is, let's say, for example, this video here that I have, which is my intro video, instead of me going to studio mix console and then finding the video and putting, let's say a reverb in here, direct offline processing allows me to attach the reverb directly onto the clip, but it uses less CPU because you are processing it offline. So let's go ahead and take a look at it so we understand how this works. So we're going to go into audio, go to direct offline processing, and here you get this menu to pop up. It says here, please select an event. So it has to be an audio clip. We're going to go ahead and click the audio. And now here, these two options are now available. We're going to go ahead and put plugin and we're going to go into our reverb and put the pro R from fab filter. And now let's take a listen to the track without the reverb first. Right, so we heard a, a few bars of that. So now what happens if we hit auto apply, it's going to automatically apply what I'm putting inside of here. So if I put a reverb and a distortion, it's going to automatically affect it. But let's say if I don't want it to auto apply. So let's just go ahead and undo that really quick. And we're going to go back into the pro R and we're going to not hit auto apply. Now what we're going to do is we're going to press play. And you can see you can audition the sound before you apply it onto the sound. Now, if we want to apply it so that it's fixed, then we hit apply. But for now, we're not doing that. So the idea behind using direct offline processing is let's say you're a sound designer or let's say you're doing some vocal ad libs and you want to make sure that the ad libs have enough reverb. You can go ahead and process that in here. And if let's say I'm just going to hit auto apply so we can hear what's going on in real time. And let's say I just lower this. Look at the waveform as I'm moving this, right? It's going to shape differently. So there it got a little bigger because I have less reverb. If I put it all the way up, then it's going to get smaller because the texture is going to get a little bit more washed. Again, why is this useful? Because when you're using direct offline processing, let's say I want my reverb there. I'm going to play the track. I love it. I want to keep it there. All I need to do now is I already hit auto apply. So I just hit X. And now the clip or track has reverb. And if I check my mixer, there's no reverb in here. So what happens is that I'm saving CPU power so I can add all of my effects in here. And the cool thing is, is that if I click it and go back into the menu again, 
the process is still saved in here. So you can always go back and edit it. Now keep in mind, if I turn it off here, it's gonna go back to the original sound. So in, in some cases, it is a win-win situation because first, again, you're saving CPU power. You don't need to load your mixer with all these different effects that you have. Let's say you go here and you have some sends and you have some inserts. You don't need to load your channel with that. You can also create your vocal chain in here. Let's say you want to create a vocal chain that sounds like how I see on YouTube, like Drake or like Travis Scott. You can create that vocal chain in here, hit auto apply, and it will apply that vocal chain in here. Now, another cool thing is, is that let's say you want to save certain sounds. We can actually grab the plugin and we could drop them in here. So let's say Pro R, I can grab, drag, and put it down here. Let's say I add a distortion. Again, I'm gonna put Saturn, here it is. And I can again grab this and put it down here. Now what's important about this is let's say you have that vocal chain you like, you could save them into banks. So here, if I go to bank one, you see that my two plugins are now saved in here. And I could just put that there, I can hit it, and I can activate it inside of my process or my chain. So that's how you use direct offline processing. If you do have any questions on any of these tips, you can just go ahead and drop your comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you reach the end of this video, I'm gonna take some time right now to talk about my members only club. You can go ahead and join by hitting the join button on my channel. And in the members only club, you're gonna see different kinds of content like how to set up my master template. I actually go in and show you how I personally set up my master template. I show you how to do a multi-computer music setup for your studio. I'm also gonna be posting my story, professional tips that have gotten me success in this industry, and much, much more. The Members Only Club is gonna be more personal. It's gonna be more me talking into the camera, just getting to know me, my personality, and also teaching you some of the secrets that we pros use when we are producing music for big clients such as Showtime, History Channel, HBO, and other large networks. If you like like this video hit the thumbs up subscribe don't forget to share this with your musician friends i will see you guys soon